Welcome back. On our last episode on The Bible Says, we discussed what happens when we die. Today, we're going to take an in-depth look at another eye-opening and hot topic, one that leads many to serve God out of fear rather than love, a topic that has been and continues to be misunderstood, hellfire. The Bible is very clear on these important topics, so none need be confused or deceived as to the truth. Without further delay, let's dive into what the Bible says on this crucial subject. Firstly, many see the lake of fire, otherwise known as hellfire, as being controlled by a devil that carries a pitchfork and has horns and a long pointed tail. But is that true? God's word tells us in Matthew 25:41 that there is only one purpose for the lake of fire or hellfire, to destroy Satan and his angels and all human beings that have chosen to reject God's truth and his son's free gift of grace will join Satan and his angels as they will not be permitted to enter heaven. See John 3.16 Therefore, if Satan and his angels will be destroyed in the lake of fire, Satan can't be in charge of it. 2 Corinthians 11.14 describes Satan as an angel of light and not a deformed demon creature. Could it be that Satan would have people deceived as to his appearance so he can deceive them at some point into thinking he is someone he's not? Something to ponder. If God is love, as most Christians profess, he cannot be cruel. While it is true there will be an end to sin and all sinners, God's character of love is contrary to the cruelty of eternal hellfire. Those preachers that teach that you have to obey God out of fear of eternal hellfire cannot truly love God with all their heart. As 1 John 4.18 tells us, There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Yes, hellfire is real. Matthew thirteen forty one and 42 says, The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now that we know hellfire is real, what exactly is it that goes into the fire? Mark 9, 43 through 47 tells us, And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out, it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. These scriptures clearly show you will have a body that will go to hell. And the fire will not be quenched, meaning it won't be quenched until you are consumed. Matthew 5.30 tells us, And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. This quote also mentions the body going to hell. Yes, Matthew 10, 28 says, Hell will destroy both body and soul, 
but not just the spirit or soul that leaves the body at death, as many people believe. One story in the Bible that people like to use as evidence that people go to heaven or hell as soon as they die is the story of the rich man and Lazarus, found in Luke 16, 19-31. However, is that story literal or a parable? Could a single drop of water really relieve a man's suffering in hell? No. Is Abraham's bosom a real place? No. Therefore, we can safely conclude that this story is a parable that was taught simply to teach a moral lesson. Is hell burning right now? The answer, no. We find this answer in Revelation 20 and 21. In short, hellfire destroys all the wicked at the end of the millennium, or 1,000 years. Now, for the $1 million question, is hellfire going to burn eternally? Let's see what the Bible says. Psalm 37, 9-10 reads, For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, they shall diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. Psalm 37.20 says, But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume, and to smoke shall they consume away. In these verses we see that the wicked won't exist. They are consumed away. Matthew 25, 46 says, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. This scripture says everlasting punishment, not everlasting punishing. 2 Thessalonians 1, 9 clearly says, Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction? from the presence of the Lord, and from the glory of His power. We're all familiar with Sodom and Gomorrah, which was destroyed because of their wickedness. The Bible tells us in Jude 7 that they are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Are those two cities still burning? No. See also 2 Peter 2, 6, and Malachi 4, 1 and 3 for further clarification. Make no mistake, the wicked shall be eternally destroyed, turned to ashes or stubble. Let's take a look at another word that seems to cause confusion to many, the word forever, as in Revelation twenty, ten, which reads, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. What exactly does forever mean in the Bible? Let's take a look at a few scriptures. First Samuel 1, 22 and 28 shows us that forever means as long as you live, as in the case of Samuel. Psalm 48, 14 tells us forever means until death. Therefore, burning forever can mean that man will burn in the lake of fire until he dies. Since Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death, the Bible cannot mean that the wicked will live eternally in hell. It simply means that the effect of the fire is eternal, not the fire itself. The second death is the sinner's eternal fate. So what does the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever found in Revelation 14.11 mean? Notice that it says the smoke and not the torment lasts forever. One final thought. How could the righteous be happy in heaven knowing that those they loved were suffering in the fires of hell for all eternity? It just doesn't make sense. God is love, not cruel. 
those that have rejected God and His Son's free offer of salvation and eternal life have chosen eternal death, non-existence. After all, Revelation 21.4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Again, how could this scripture be true if loved ones were burning eternally in the fires of hell? There is good news after all this talk of hellfire. 2 Peter 3, 10 and 13 tell us that the earth will be burned up and there will be new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. This happens after all the wicked are destroyed with fire and the fire goes out. The saints then inherit God's new earth and a peaceful, eternal life with the God of love. Our closing scripture is 1 John 5, 12, which reads, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. My prayer is that all those viewing this will choose life by accepting and following Jesus Christ, our Savior. Next, on The Bible Says, we'll be discussing the judgment. How does God decide? Who is worthy? Until then, Maranatha.